College. In this video, I will discuss about object-oriented system design subject and the topic that I'm going to take today is introduction to UML, what is UML and uh, various aspects related to UML. Let's start the video now. Uh, so the outline will be a uh, background of UML, what is unified modeling language, aspects of UML, uh, uses of UML, and conceptual model of UML. So uh, background of UML goes back to object-oriented uh, system design that started way back in 1970s. And I, that was the time when uh, 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 various projects started to shift from uh, the structured procedure oriented development to object oriented development and then uh, the team started to work on object oriented development of large complex system uh, they felt need to uh, model things uh, design various uh, requirements and other uh, sort of documentation they they felt need to do that and at that time uh, they felt that there should be uh, something uh, a language through which uh, uh, some notation through which a particular complex system or a system that they are going to build uh, as for the concepts and patterns of uh, object oriented programming can be developed and designed. So uh, the modeling technique, uh, uh, they, uh, it appeared in 1970s and 80s and the methodologist uh, it is decided to do it because uh, they felt that there were many object oriented programming languages are there and uh, uh, the application uh, ha are becoming very complex and large so to keep up with the fast development process of such a complex system uh, they need to develop some model some documentation uh, through which the entire process can be simplified so um, the most notable of such modeling language at that time was Booch, Jacobson, uh, OOSC, and uh, Rombog OOMT model. Uh, and uh, it, then uh, these three different uh, modeling methods, uh, those three were different, and that's why. Uh, the, they, they, they came together, Booch and uh, Rumbog and Jacobson, they, all three uh, person, they sit together and they decided that they, they need to mod unify them so that one common modeling language uh, can be introduced. And this effort started in October 1994 when Rumbog joined Booch at Rational Inc., Rational Company. And uh, at that time, uh, they, their effort came and materialized into the first of its draft, that was 0.8 draft of unified method that was released in October 1995. And at the same time, Jacobson joined Rational and scope of UML project was further expanded and they further included OOSC, which is Object Oriented Software Engineering Method. So they finally formed a group known as Object Management Group and the first version of UML specification draft was proposed in OMG in January 1997. And after that, UML became a modeling language and uh, the team, the people who are working in uh, software development uh, and uh, which is based on object-oriented development, they started to use it to uh, create different models related to the problem domain. So what is UML? Uh, UML is a short form and acronym for the uh, term Unified Modeling Language and standard language for basically specifying, visualizing, constructing, documenting the artifacts of software system. It is a pictorial language used to make software blueprint and described as a general purpose visual modeling language, which uh, basically helps uh, the team to uh, gather the requirements, then put them, the pieces, the parts, and information related to the project on some visual aspect with the help of the various notation, which is part of UML, Unified Modeling Language. So idea is to, you can visualize with this sort of model, 
you can specify many things associated with the project and you can construct and document the software system that the team is going to develop. Uh, model, uh, you can model the software system. It is all used to model non-software system as well. So it's like uh, UML is not only for software development. Uh, this uh, language can be used in other uh, engineering fields like uh, say some construction of a bridge, some building is going to be made or uh, in some manufacturing unit or some mechanical engineering uh, plant. So in all various where designing is a requirement, modding is a requirement, one can use UML. UML is uh, obviously it's not a programming language. We don't code, we don't uh, design program with the help of this. We only model a system with the help of UML notation and UML features. So, uh, I, and this uh, tool is a uh, common tool for all sorts of modeling requirement. And it has direct relation with object-oriented analysis. So mainly it is uh, useful where the object-oriented development is being done by the software development team. Uh, various aspects of UML is there are three main aspects related to UML. So the language, the model, the unified, uh, because uh, various things are unified here. Uh, so language is basically uh, the main part of it through which you are able to communicate about a subject, about a system, various requirement uh, which is which needs to be there in software development. Um, and uh, obviously uh, with the help of some language in which you are actually going to model something will be needed. The team collaborate together, sit together, communicate with each other. And uh, model is uh, basically the visual representation of the system. And unified, uh, basically putting together various uh, information system and different engineering practices, standards together in one common modeling tool. So these are three aspects of UML. So language enables us to communicate. Then model is a representation of the subject, the system, or even the ideas. Uh, so that uh, you put together the idea on some visual uh, representation which you can show to someone, you can discuss with someone, or you can put up the entire idea with the team or the, the person who's actually uh, investing in the project. Unified, it is to bring together the information system and technology industry in engineering practices. The uses of UML, uh, it can be used in, in enterprise information system, banking and financial services, uh, telecommunication, transportation, defense aerospace, retail, medical electronics, and scientific uh, and distributed web services. Uh, it's not limited to one specific uh, problem domain. Uh, it's, it's very diverse. Its requirement is very diverse. I mean, UML can be applied to a basic software system, development of software system to any other part like telecommunication or even designing transportation systems. So these are various applications or you can say the uses of UML. Conceptual model of UML, basically conceptually uh, when we do modeling with the help of UML tool, what are the various aspects, the needs and uh, the uh, various components that are going to be there. So these you can call as building blocks of UML. So there are three categories here, things. So things are very important part of UML diagrams and the relationship, how various things which are there in that diagram are related to each other. And then basically the diagrams. Uh, there are different categories of diagram. Once we put together various things and relationship, so that becomes a particular type of diagram. So uh, there are categories of diagram here. Uh, so things in things, there are four category of things, structural things, behavioral things, grouping, annotational things, and um, we have relationship, how various objects or the nodes are connected with each other. So um, there are these relationship like dependency, generalization, association, realization and uh, these are the categories of diagrams that we can make when we use UML for any uh, problem domain for which we are uh, creating models. Uh, 
so use case diagram class diagram object diagram sequence diagram collaboration diagram straight chart diagram activity diagram component diagram and deployment diagram so things uh, in the uml these are four things as i spoke to you earlier so structural things what are structural things mainly so in any uml diagram uh, structural things mainly the nouns of uml model right so nouns are like banker user so these are the nouns so if you create a diagram so try to look for these words i mean these nouns so they uh, you can say are the structural things so representing elements that are either conceptual or physical physical thing is like for a automatic teller machine when we talk about atm so uh, atm has this machine uh, so and then there is a server so these are all noun and then we have this account holder which is trying to access the atm to take out uh, his money so uh, the account holder is also a, 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 a physical thing conceptual thing any other thing which is not in physical form but main part of uh, uml diagram so there are seven kind of structural things we have classes and object we have interfaces collaboration use cases actors component and nodes so let's erase this thing here Uh, so th this is a notation to represent a class and uh, sorry uh, what is a class and this is a notation which looks similar to a class except few um, uh, i mean the symbols are little different here uh, then we have interfaces uh, this is the notation of interface in uml and we have uh, collaboration name so we use a dotted uh, oval to represent collaboration then uh, fifth symbol is a actor so when we draw like a sequence diagram so we need actor uh, notation to represent actors for example account holder is an actor or serviceman is an actor and this is uh, a notation to represent component so uh, whenever a software system is built it is basically a a larger term that represent various component that are there within a software system so to represent that specific component uh, we can use the symbol and then uh, this is a known uh, it's a cube uh, so this is a known we have behavioral things which are things in uml uh, so behavioral things are which represents the dynamic part of uml model these are the verb of a model and represents behavior over time and space there are two primary kind of behavioral things messages and states so when we try to show communication between objects or classes we generally use these arrows uh, to show the connection or association and we have these uh, different states the symbols we use like this this represents this initial state this represents the state box this is your decision box and this is the final state now next part is the grouping things so grouping things are the the part of the uml diagram that are used to organize uh, uh, the uh, different um, uh, part of the diagram so there are various components various uh, things various uh, which is part of the uml diagram so if you want to organize them you can organize that using a package so this is a symbol for a package so for example this represents a packet that represent business rule so business rule is a package that consist of various um, uh, rules and other uh, uh, informations that are put together in one uh, package so you can say it's a general purpose mechanism for organizing elements into a group so if there are so many elements uh, which is there in uh, the software system and you want to organize so those which are similar to each other we can put them in one package so for all business rules that go into package of business rule uh, all server related information goes into server package or accounting related uh, rules goes to accounting package so this sort of so pack
packages are used for grouping things. Then annotational things. Uh, those things in the diagram that uh, basically are needed to describe something. So that can be a note, like this is a note symbol. So if you want to annotate something, if something is there and you just want to put some description related to there, so you can use annotation. So this is annotational things. So that will be all for this video and uh, uh, the content that I have taken uh, uh, are taken from the book uh, by Booch, Jerombog and Jakobson. And the book name is uh, Unified Modeling Language. Thank you so much, everyone.